This week's episode is brought to you by Audible.com, the leading provider in spoken word entertainment. Get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Visit audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast to get the details. This episode is also brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to Squarespace.com and use the code MUGGLE. Hello, this is David Heyman, and I'm the producer of the Harry Potter films, and this is MuggleCast. Because we're about to interrupt your regularly scheduled Saturday morning programming. That was by Micah, not me. This is MuggleCast episode 216 for December 11th, 2010. Good morning, everybody. Hello, Jamie and Micah. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, it's yo, not yo. morning. It's not morning. It's, <laughs> it's almost dark here. How can it be morning there? That's we, ridiculous. I know. We are worldwide this morning for me. If you're listening to us on the West Coast this morning, I can feel your pain. But we thank everyone for um, getting up and uh, listening. Wait, what no time matter. is it? Well, it's 8 a.m. I mean, it's not that early. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Jamie would have been working for an hour by now if he was yeah. there. He gets to work at 8 a.m., don't you, Jamie? No, 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 I don't. I, I, oh. I, don't. I was trying to make out there that, that I was some type of really pretty hard worker and stuff. But no, I get there at 9. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what most people do get up at or go to work at 9 a.m. Yeah, but don't, don't you get to school at like 7.30 or something? And then yeah, when I was in high what? school... <laughs> That, that is obscene. I'm What's wrong with you now. people over there? One time, I, I dragged Jamie to school with me. He was doing uh, our morning show. With <laughs> oh, yeah, that was fun. And, yeah, it was. <laughs> and it was I think it, it was a live show. So I think we had to be out the door at 5 a.m. And you were in the worst Oh, mood. I remember that. I remember that. Oh, that was... That was... Oh, I... Andrew, I did enjoy that, and I understand why you want to take part in your school program and that, but I wouldn't get up at 5 a.m. to go and do that. I, I just I record it and send it on CD. I know. Send it on CD. Well, we like to do it live, and that's why we're doing it live today. Eric, uh, hey, Eric. You, uh, hey, Eric. Hey, guys. Hopped on a minute late, hey. otherwise I would have said hello to you at the beginning. That's well, okay. We have a great show for everyone today. It's our annual year in review show. This is the third time we're doing a sort of um, award show. And just the second year that we're doing this really fun format, if you guys remember last year, we took we, – we had a variety of categories and we had you guys vote on them live as we're recording to determine the winners. And we have pretty much the same categories as last year and um, there, there's, there's some good uh, stories and categories. For example, most shocking news story. This is going to be one of my favorites this year, I think. So it's it's the Muggle Casties. It's the, the annual Muggle Casties. Third annual yeah. Muggle Casties. That name is so long, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, first before we do that, Micah Tannenbaum is in the Muggle Cast News Center. He's going to update us on the latest stories. What's going on in Harry Potter this Saturday morning, Micah? The uh, Deathly Hallows video game, part one video game, uh, was released in uh, the middle of November. And uh, surprisingly, it was met with uh, negative reviews. And uh, I actually went out, I bought the game, I uh, played it a little bit, uh, probably too much, in fact. And uh, I have to agree, I, you know, I, I was optimistic a couple of shows ago uh, about how this game was going to turn out because we had Nick on, and Nick said he had gone to EA, he had experienced the game, and uh, he had a lot of good things to say about it. And the initial reviews, you know, before the game was released about the graphics and things like that, were pretty positive. And uh, this, just the gameplay, it, that's what it comes down to every time. The gameplay is just terrible. What and, does that mean? Uh, yeah, what does that mean for us? What, is, uh, what does gameplay actually mean? <laughs> it's a, it's uh, well, a jargon word, but I don't know <laughs> what it means. It, you know, just going from, um, you know, scene to scene, and, or I guess level to level, and uh, just the things that you're tasked with, the things that you have to do. And uh, I know they have to try and come up with 
innovative ways for for the game to be different. But uh, you know, for example, you uh, which makes absolutely no sense. You have to put on a, the invisibility cloak once you uh, apparate to London away from the wedding, and uh, you know, go and test different people to see if they're Death Eaters or not. But you bump into somebody, and the invisibility cloak falls off, and then you have to go back and do it again. So, uh, but, Ooh, but that makes well, it that's challenging. Realism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike, it sounds uh, well, like I, I want this game. game. No. <laughs> no, you don't want this game. You don't want this game. It uh, sounds like Mike uh, is just fed up because he's not a good wizard. No, so. it sounds like he's having trouble. <laughs> yeah, he's still on that same level. He hasn't even passed it yet. He can't beat a child's game. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, don't let your own incapabilities get in the way of reviewing the game. Uh, or or well, giving us the news, well, jeez. I will say, I'm, I'm not the only one that, that has reviewed this game in a negative light. You're right, so. you're right. Um, lots of video game sites, you know, they review video games as they always do, and they've always been harsh on Harry Potter, and this one was no different. Um, and just, just you know which one was reviewed positively? It was the Lego Harry Potter video game. Yes. That game was awesome. Well, it you was... You know what, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still on book one with that one, with that game. I, 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 I don't know that I love it. I'm just gonna say that you're still. I on think the. Le- what do you mean? Yeah, I, on, I, le- I I love and I played all the Lego games, but I haven't advanced past the first out of you know it's years one through four, and I'm still right. in the first year, in in the Lego game. So, Eric, get- I mean, I ha- according yeah. to this Google Doc, it says you have an idea for a successful Potter video game. Yeah, you know they they they, they really hyped this game seven up. You know, DH Part One game to be this amazing game because it wasn't structured in Hogwarts. And I don't think that that's, you know, just like the movie wasn't in Hogwarts, it kind of felt odd. It was off. There was something off about it. I think they need a free-roaming Hogwarts game. I'm surprised that they haven't done it by now. Like, like but, Grand Theft Hogwarts. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But for, from, year, from years one through seven, you start off, okay, and you can be in any of the houses – in any of the houses, and it would it would create a ton of content because you'd be you know just going to classes, everything from from events. It doesn't even have to really have anything to do with Harry Potter, other than the namesake Harry Potter, uh, a Hogwarts journey, and, and but you just basically meet all sorts of interesting people, the ghosts, the characters, and it could be done really well. I feel like That's when not- they're when they're trying to combine you know cram it all into a game or create these game scenarios where there ordinarily wouldn't be game scenarios that's where the the stress comes in and maybe ea would do better to to kind of think uh outside the box but inside the castle well the problem though is that i think they have the agreement with the movies so uh, so much of what you see on the film is being translated to the video game and i don't think that always works out very well and uh actually the video game did something that the movie didn't you know when um they find uh, Dean and uh, was a grip hook wandering around, and you have to follow them. You know, like, kind of like through all these forest scenes, and nope. that wasn't in the uh, the the movie, but it was in the book. Right. So th- they are they do include some things from the book, but I just think you know if you thought the forest scenes dragged in the movie, but wait till you play the video <laughs> game. <laughs> is there, is, is it's there ten dancing? levels. Mike, is no there a dancing points. level with uh, Hermione? Ooh, like a dance uh, dance I haven't gotten that far. I hope not. Uh, but, <laughs> he's still on time. Court. <laughs> but the other yeah. thing, though, is this. There's not enough. You know, the fact that they split this game, like the movie, into two parts, they have you do all these side tasks that, you know, don't kind of flow with the game very well. Uh-huh. So all of a sudden, you'll be moving from one scene to the next as you know as if you're watching the movie, and you're sort of taken on this detour of, you know, having to fight death eaters or creatures or whatever in these different areas that never existed and it, it just it does the game doesn't flow very well in that sense but okay well before we move on we want to remind everyone that this episode is brought to you by squarespace.com the fast and easy way to create and manage a high quality website or blog create a website that's uniquely you to display your photos from Flickr, a blog you've been thinking about starting or the tweets and rss feeds you like the most all in the design and colors of your choice. Whatever you want to communicate, you can say it easily and with style with Squarespace. They also have an iPhone app which makes it easy to update your site while you're on the go. Try it all out today for free. Visit squarespace.com and sign up for a free trial. Then choose a design template to get started. No credit card needed. Just give it a try to build your website. Then if you decide to purchase, enter code MUGGLE to receive 10% off for six months. That's squarespace.com, offer code MUGGLE. We thank Squarespace for their support of MuggleCast. 
We'd like to remind you again that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the leading provider in spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 35,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded and played back anywhere, just like MuggleCast. Log on to audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast for your free audiobook. Andrew, do you know what you should do as a game? Hmm. You should... Because your your name is Sim, <laughs> you should get your entire family in one house and then have people tweet in and tell you what they want you to do. <laughs> like the video game The Sims, yeah. yes. <laughs> that would be so cool. You know, I can't tell you how many people, when people find out my last name, the first thing out of their mouths almost always is, oh, like the video game? I'm like, yes, like the video game. And as a joke, I'm like, I invented it. And half the time people are like, Really? I'm like, yeah, well, clearly you didn't come before the video game. <laughs> yeah. Right. One day when people hear the name Sims, they will think of me and not the video And game. not the video game, yeah. It's like it's like the Seacrest. Nobody would think of the video game. They would think of Ryan Seacrest. So when they go to the, to the store to buy the game, they'll say, oh, I wonder if this is modeled after Andrew Sims. Right. <laughs> yeah. what anyway, what's, yeah. what, else, what else is going on <laughs> in well, the, no, no. with the news? In the well, news. Deathly Hallows Part 1 uh, grossed so far seven hundred and thirteen point three million dollars worldwide uh, as far wow. as i know it's still top in the box office world uh internationally it struggled a bit domestically in its third week falling to uh tangled and uh, i'm not sure it, it will do much better this week with uh the chronicles of narnia movie that's coming out but that's a lot of money in a very short period of time i'm sure it will work its way up into the top ten uh, in the next couple of weeks, but Jamie, uh, this is the first time you've been on since the movie came out. What do you think? Yeah, of it? I was just about to. I was just about to ask you if you guys have reviewed it yet. Like, uh, I assume you have. Uh, well, I started writing a review that I want to finish, but uh, I haven't really got around to it yet. Um, I thought it was really. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was excellent. Really, there are a couple of things that I just that, that really annoyed me um, to the point that I thought, well. You know, if you're going to put that in there, then I don't see how you can call yourself filmmakers. Like, what? When, no, no, no. Honestly, honestly, when Snape first appeared at the uh, Malfoy, Malfoy Manor, Manor. Yeah. yeah, and he walks in, and Voldemort says, "We've saved you a seat," and I thought, "Oh, that's such a <laughs> terrible line!" After after what he says in the book, so that's just brilliant when he says, "You are very nearly late," and that's such a great line. And then, and then when. Um, when uh, Arthur Weasley arrives at the burrow and he just strolls up all casually and there's a good chance that one of his children has, has died and and get tell me if I'm wrong but doesn't Maddo says go to the burrows with a with an S instead of the burrow <laughs> and I thought well how, how can you get that wrong <laughs> uh, I don't know about that last one I think maybe Voldemort saying we saved you seat it's it fed into the I got the impression that Voldemort was quirkier in this film he was a bit more crazier and i think that sort of fed into it because he was sort of sarcastic wasn't he well, we yeah, you a seat. well he, he bullies the rest of the death eaters so it, it makes it seem like it just emphasizes that dumbledore or voldemort voldemort still trusts snape and that you know the events of the previous films although limited and edited omitted i guess, even. I guess. it just oh i don't know i just don't but, think it were but the rest of the film was brilliant apart from the dancing scene obviously you know, uh, like that. Like, like no, it was Why ridiculous. not? It was so, it was so cheesy. You didn't like the song, Oh Children, Nick Cave? No, well, not ri- why, why? Am I supposed to? Is it su- supposed to have meaning? or? Well, David Yates likes it, so you're supposed to. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, oh, right. Well, in which case, I love it. But no, <laughs> it was, I don't know. I, the entire film was great. The stabbing of the, um, stabbing Elf of the, what's of the Dolly. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> the Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, stabbing of the locket was amazing. I really like that. That was really um, interestingly done. But yeah, no, no, Dobby, I thought when she threw the dagger and then it went through and she just gave it a look that was perfect, just like, you know, I've got one over on you. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, such a good scene. So overall, where does it rank in terms of the films? It... Oh, f- first, I think, definitely. Really? Like, mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was easily mm-hmm. the best. It just it just sort of flowed from beginning to end well. And it just it took itself more seriously. I know that. It's like a stock phrase of film reviews, but it seems to be true. Especially this. for Harry Potter. This one is yeah, the darkest. Exactly. Yeah. This one's the darkest. The darkest you can't even darkest, see anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
Well, I, you can't end the copy that I downloaded, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so I did take a look, though, over on uh, Box Office Mojo, and, and the film is currently at number 40 all time, and uh, I'm no, sure it will creep its way up. Uh, well, no, I mean, it'll, it'll pass a lot, probably, with this weekend. You think so? I mean, it's already been out for almost a month now. Yeah, and it's got Tangled and the new Narnia movie. Isn't that out? Yeah, it, it's coming yeah. out this... Or, yeah, it, it came, came out. out. Yeah, it's out already. Yeah, yeah but and I mean, I have it, to go see it. Probably the, the films in front of it, I didn't look, but, I mean, you're talking probably about a couple million dollars either way, so it, it will move past those films easily. I mean, you're, I think, pretty much, with the exception of Prisoner Azkaban, all the Harry Potter films are in the top 25, so... Why was Prisoner of Azkaban not there, then? I don't know. It Nobody it likes Alfonso. Cut. It bombs, then. It, Micah, I am dying to see this movie Aww. again, but I don't want to go to the movie theater. When can I expect to see it on DVD? March 18th. Oh. What? Must have missed that. Is that new? That's new. Like, three big stories all came out last night. <laughs> <laughs> I checked um, on it last night. I think you had trouble with one of them. Warn- yes, I did. Warner Brothers Switzerland uh, apparently told DanRadcliffe.de that the DVD is coming out March 18th, 2011. That's not, all, that's not a Tuesday. So I think in the U.S. it'll either come out on um, March 15th or the 22nd, which I think, if, you remember, if I remember correctly, that's, that's typically when November DVDs come out. So I think that's just the right period of yeah, time. Yeah, I, I think you're right about I think it being the 15th is correct because um, the U.S. gets a lot of the, um, the DVDs earlier than the European ones. Because we are better than you. No, it's Although just I don't We have people <laughs> listening. They finally There's... can listen to the UK, and you're saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah just you're going to alienate everyone now. <laughs> That's why I'm up early, but we're up early for you guys in England. That's so, true. Yeah. But uh, while uh, you're talking about this, Andrew, you spoke to David Yates at the premiere. What kind of deleted scenes... Uh, can we expect on the DVD? <laughs> you think I remember? <laughs> I can't remember what he Look said. Look it up. You wrote it down. Honestly, no, words. I didn't know. It was on video. Uh, watch my premiere footage to hear what David Yates says. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I honestly forget. That was such a whirlwind. I was, that was nuts. Uh, uh, I'm sure Sims. it's some good stuff. Anyway, what else is going on in the news? Uh, a little bit of casting news. Kelly McDonald, Andrew, who... You seem to know a bit about mm. some of the other things that she's done. Uh, she's going to play the Grey Lady in uh, Part 2. Yes. And uh, I'm sure we'll be getting some small bits of casting news in the next couple of weeks. I don't think we have the full cast yet. Um, but we do have a casting page over on MuggleNet.com in the uh, Movie 7 section. Kelly Mc- I do shameless plug. but Kelly McDonald is hot right now. She's in the hit show Boardwalk Empire on HBO. And um, she's she's so great in the show. Um, so this is really exciting news for for everyone who's been watching Boardwalk Empire this season. Is also a Harry Potter fan. Yeah, it hasn't been canceled, has it? No, it, it was renewed. Okay. Like after the second episode, they. I thought so, but yeah. this 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 interview with Kelly McDonald says I hear that now that Boardwalk's done, you're working on this. So I guess it's just I means think well filming, filming the first season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. She looks good though. She, she, oh, and she, her she voice really plays it. Her voice, like if you watch her, you will. Th- this screams, uh, "Gray Lady." Seriously, <laughs> just she screams, she screams the color gray. No, she she has a very soft spoken voice. She's very pleasant to listen to. Um, she has a an an air about her. It's just it really yeah. nice. I that scene with Harry and the Gray Lady in the book in book seven is just so interesting because Gray Lady's kind of like distant. Obviously, she's a ghost. She's mm-hmm. she just. You know, withhold things, you know, holds holds things back and doesn't tell the full story. She has to be coerced, and I think that that'll give something to you know Kelly. Have they announced the uh, the casting for uh, the Bloody Baron? No. So, oh, wouldn't it cool if they did a backstory? Yeah, with, I was like, just thinking that. Young, like if she tells young, the story, Green and, Lady, yeah. yeah. But, all that blood and everything after it kills her. But by Plus the way, they have the costume at the exhibit. The, great, the Bloody Baron costume. It's amazing, and I, I would hate to think it went through the whole series of movies with only, like, five seconds of screen time. By the way, um, um, what was I going to say? I just had a Bob fail. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I, I remember now. Dan Radcliffe, we, we interviewed Dan Radcliffe, uh, this phone interview, fan site interview, about a month before part one came out, and somebody asked him if the Grey Lady had been cast, and he wasn't allowed to say... But he had some very, very nice things to say about the actress. 
He said he was very happy. He was just blown away that she was going to be signed on. So now we see what he was probably talking about Kelly McDonald. So hopefully we'll get to hear more about her from from him soon. Anyway, what else is going on in the news? Final bit of news for Deathly Hallows uh, Part One. It's uh, gaining a little bit of steam in terms of uh, Oscar talk. The uh, the L.A. Times has written up a couple of articles. You know, considering its release uh, in November and uh, the fact that it hasn't won a single Academy Award uh, for the series as a whole. And um, that's just ridiculous. Uh, one of the things, Andrew, you posted yesterday was that uh, it is one of the 15 visual effects semifinalists yeah. uh, for the upcoming Oscar Awards. But, uh, Which or is Academy good news, Awards. but it's like there's only been 15 films that really had good visual effects this year, so <laughs> I don't know like if this means that it has a good shot. I think it's been shortlisted before, hasn't it? Yeah, no, it's mm-hmm. definitely been Harry up Potter. for for Academy Awards. Uh, there's no question. I, I, I think John Williams has been up uh, for yes, and he hasn't won a single uh, time. Yeah, so yeah, but he's won enough other ones, hasn't he? I, I know we were going to oh, try it. Well, uh, yeah, a couple. We're going to try uh, what? I, I think we were going to try and center a discussion around this for for the next episode. But just kind of overall, do you think that this film, as opposed to any of the others before it, deserve? an award more or is it just getting to that point where look this is going to be the highest grossing franchise of all time they should get something i mean how are they going to go make eight films and not win any awards i don't think it should get an oscar though just for that reason yes i mean maybe for best picture but not not i don't think it should get a visual effects uh oscar just for you know sort of a sympathy like oh look at you you guys highest franchise highest grossing franchise of all time and if you look at the competitors, um, Tron Legacy, I mean, I think that's going to, that's very visual effects heavy. So I think that's going to be a hard one to beat. Inception, uh, all of these are very visual oh, effects Inception, yeah. heavy. Harry Potter, or th- this film, I, I mean, <laughs> Dobby and Creature look great. The Harry and Hermione cor- Horcrux scene look great. Uh, Voldemort looked great, but are they really blow your mind visual effects that okay, are worthy well, of an Oscar? No. no, 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 no. I don't think blowing your mind qualifies as having an Oscar. I think special effects, if you are, if it's believable in front of the camera that you actually believe that it's part of the film, that it's actual reality, then I think that deserves an Oscar. And I think a lot of the stuff that you see in the Deathly Hallows is mostly CG that you don't even realize it is because it's just so well done. I, I disagree. There's a lot of acting in the film as well that would well, support. Well, you know, I know there's a lot of Oscar. acting and there's a lot of you know cinematography and all that crap. But I'm talking about a special effects go. Like, of course, Dobby, the, the the house elves are are obviously CG, but like some, like like the spell work between them. I the, I think the chase scene um, where um, the um, um, oh, Carl, what's, 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 snatch the snatcher <laughs> scene in the forest with all the with all the spells going back and forth. I mean that's. That's great CG. <laughs> no, it's actually, not. Actually, yes, it no, is. It's actually not. It's not CG though. It's really not. You this this so? movie was not near as reliable on CG as 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 prior Harry Potter. I think films. Yeah, I agree, Eric. Like a lot of it was clever filmmaking, and I'm not saying mm-hmm. that, that it wasn't sort of um, it didn't use CG, but it, it was worked, used in, yeah. a, in a clever way, like with the Snatcher just seeing Hermione and just going round, and it's subtle yeah. CGI can also win Oscars, I think, if it's done in the best way, you know. Very much so. I'd, I'd like to see, like, a soundtrack Oscar for this film. Because, like, a maybe it's just, maybe I just haven't noticed it yet, like other Oscars. Oh, but the score? Yeah, for the score. Oh, okay. Well, will it be shortlisted for Best Picture? Have they announced that yet, or is that still going to uh, be released sometime so. in the future? No, it'll be, it'll be the Black let's... Swan and all those movies that haven't been released yet to the rest of the world. Let's save all our hope and energy for Part 2 getting Best Picture. I, I feel like that really could be a contender for Best Picture. This one, again, I don't know, was it a Best Picture? Was uh, were the scenes where they're on mountain tops? Was that... Does that make it a best picture i mean just because you don't get the film doesn't mean the yeah, academy won't i Eric. get the film <laughs> i just think you guys are relying too much on a sympathy vote sympathy vote wow i don't know if that's the right well, word wow. i think you could be uh, right yeah. <laughs> well wasn't this the case jamie and, and matt with uh with lord of the rings where the first two films didn't really get yeah, any anything, oscar consideration no. And then and Return I, yeah. of the King yeah. got everything. And in my opinion, I didn't think the Return of the King, the one that won 11 Academy Awards, was the best of the trilogy. 
It, it was just long and epic. It was and, long and epic, and it had all these fight sequences. I thought that, I- in a way, that they gave all 11 as a sympathy vote for not giving any of the other films Caddy. Maybe, yeah. But do, no, do they, they do they, that? They, 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 don't, they aren't even aren't human. They, they aren't even yeah, human. Exactly. They don't have a sympathy <laughs> vote. Yeah. What? They're not even... <laughs> the filmmakers The Academy. Are. Oh, the Academy. Academy. I thought you were talking yeah. about... Well, no, bec- uh, of course it's not. It's a fantasy film. That None of them are human. All right, well, that's all for news. Before we get to our big year in review, the third annual MuggleCasties, um, all throughout the show today, we're going to be looking back at some of the best MuggleCast moments of the year. This first one was from episode 190. It was our Helping Haiti Heal special. It was when a um, few Harry Potter podcasts, MuggleCast, PotterCast, Harry Potter Alliance's podcast, Hogwarts Radio, I think one or two others too, Fiction Alley. All got together to do one giant podcast, and we each took turns doing like a half hour. And um, this is a moment from our portion. It was uh, Mi- Micah told me I could pick any moment from this from this from this one. So naturally, to inflate my ego, this Saturday morning I picked something that I did this episode. So <laughs> of course, let's go back in time and listen. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what it's going for. Okay, I did one more because I wanted to double check my work, and um, I I decided to. Um, uh, this second scene is where Ron rejoins Harry and Hermione after running away. You guys remember this from Book Seven, right? Yeah. Yes. Now yeah. Uh, this may be a little controversial, but I had to do it. Uh, I mixed it in with his score from The Meadow, which can be heard in the film. New Moon. Don't don't judge it yet. Take a listen. I I really think this works. I'm judging, Andrew. I'm judging. You come back after weeks, weeks, and you think <laughs> it's going to all be all right if you just say sorry? Well, what else can I say? Ron shouted, and Harry was glad that Ron was fighting back. Oh, I don't know. Yelled Hermione with awful sarcasm. Rack your brains, Ron. That should only take a couple of seconds. Hermione injected Harry, who considered this a low blow. He just saved my... I don't care, she screamed. I don't care what he's done. Weeks and weeks, we could have been dead for all he knew. I knew you weren't dead, bellowed Ron, (laughs) drowning her voice for the first time and approaching as close as he could with the shield charm between them. Harry's all over the Prophet. And all over the radio. They're looking for you everywhere. All these rumors and mental stories. I knew I'd hear straight off if you were dead. So that was um that was, was quite cool actually. I don't think I've heard that before. You were on the show. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite I was quite I was quite Maybe we should put you up for an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was when um that was when we had learned that Alexander Desplat was going to do part one. So I took Sorry, who? Who? Alexander Desplat <laughs> was going to compose part one. He was going to be the composer for part one. You sure that's his name, Andrew? Alexander Desplat. Yes, I know it for a fact. Come on, <laughs> why do you think it's pronounced? Well, I can't remember, but I don't think it's that. It is this plot. I 100% know that for sure. But Andrew, he, he's, he's not American. Not everyone in this world is American. <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. It's this plot. This plot. Anyway, he was signed on to do part one, and I um, took some of his previous scores, including that from the Twilight Saga New Moon, could put them together with um, a part of Harry Potter. So anyway... Now it's time for the year in review, the third annual MuggleCast, the awards. As everybody remembers, last year we took live, uh, we did a live poll in numerous categories to help determine what were the biggest stories, the biggest winners of the year. And we're going to do that same exact thing this year. This year, I'm happy to say it's easier than ever for the 533 people listening live right now. A poll is just going to show up right over top the video screen, so it's you can't miss it. It's going to be very easy to vote. Our first category is Most Interesting Potter Star on Twitter. Now, I think these are the same contenders from last yeah, year. Yeah, this is last year's <laughs> one. But we're looking at who was the most interesting this year. Uh... First person was Tom Felton. Second person is Emma Watson. Third person is Work Davis. Fourth person is Matthew Lewis. And Micah, we're also giving an honorable mention to J.K. Rowling. Can you explain that, please, while I get the poll ready? 
Well, I thought we should just mention her. I mean, <laughs> even though she's uh, used Twitter uh, probably about as much as she's updated her site uh, in the last uh, year or so. So uh, just like to, uh, you know, give a little nod. That's all. Nothing more. Yeah. All right. So we're starting the poll now. People can now vote, and we will get the music going to progress this. Here we go. The results can we are- vote? Yes, feel free to vote. If, well, I'd prefer you not, because then you'd have to bring up the stream. But Tom Felton seems to be taking... I already have the stream up. Oh. <laughs> Tom Felton <laughs> seems to be taking an early lead with six, 56% of the vote. I'm going to give Warwick Davis a vote since he was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I think I'm agreeing with most of the listeners. Tom Felton was very active this year on Twitter. He's always retweeting people. And that's it. With 56% of the vote, the winner is... Tom Felton! Woo! I'd like to thank uh, everybody for... Uh, Jamie, could you do a Tom Felton impression? Hey. I can't. <laughs> I think Jamie walked Don't out. worry about it. Sounds like I, I, I would, I, your we Tom would have to Felton do a, impression sounds like John Lennon. Between the two of us, we would have to do like a Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell impression, interrupting him, accepting this award. Hey, people on Twitter, or people listening to us live, can you please at reply Tom Felton and let him know that he just won a Muggle Cast? <laughs> See if we can get him the comments. <laughs> no, but seriously, at reply him. Let him know he won uh, a Muggle Cast award for most interesting Potter star on Twitter. Okay, so I hope he doesn't expect us to send it to him. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll send him a sticker. Okay, so our next category is most shocking news story. This is uh, my favorite category, especially this year. We have some great stories. Um, first one: the mayor of London saying a theme park shouldn't be built in Orlando. If everyone remembers, I think he wrote a op-ed in the Times over the summer. And he was saying that he was furious how the theme park <laughs> was opening up in Orlando when London doesn't even have one yet. So that's Did, our. Fr- didn't you say you're more likely to get shot in Orlando than yes. in London? <laughs> <laughs> I think in the headline I wrote, sites getting shot <laughs> more, <laughs> more likely. Okay, so that's our first contender. Um, second contender, MuggleCast. <laughs> Oh, come on. Who put this in here? you got to no, go with it. No, we I'm didn't not. even mention this on the show. My we didn't story. even mention this on the show. This is the show this that we a, have to no, mention this, this on. Big. This is big, Andrew. Okay, well then, I, I need to get the Bieber story in here. This can't be replaced. Um, oh, it's replacing the Biebs, Andrew. No, I'm sorry. No. There can only be four. It Do you know how many comments we got Biebs. on that, on the thing? Okay, I, 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 okay, so second story, because Eric replaced it without telling us. Thanks, Eric. MuggleCast <laughs> not nominated for a 2010 podcast award. We got, we got snuffed. <laughs> uh, third, um, sorry, I'm typing these into the poll as we go. Third, Emma Watson cuts hair following Deathly Hallows uh, rapping. Everybody, everybody knows she now has a uh, new haircut. It's pretty shocking. And it looks weird. <laughs> Finally, well, welcome back, Jamie. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, nice sorry. Return. My phone went. I had to go and pick up my phone. It's all right. Yeah. And fourth, Dan Radcliffe thinks Bieber is a girl. And we're going to start the poll now. See how oh, see how people... Who wants? <laughs> sorry. I got a little uh, uh, happy. Come on, Bieber. Anyway, the results are tight. Emma Watson cutting hair seems to be taking an early lead. Uh, honorable mention goes to John Williams not returning for film eight. That's obviously a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, but that's some most depressing story. Oh, come on, MuggleCast. Beep, Bieber, beep, Bieber, beep, Bieber, beep, Bieber. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. As David on. Yates said at the premiere, um, th- it, th- their schedules just did not align. David Yates would have had to give um, John Williams a scroll. Sc- sc- uh, sc- Film, too early. Anyway, the winners are now in for the winner of Most Shocking News Story. And the MuggleCast D goes to... Emma Watson cuts hair following movie rap. Emma Watson, I gotta say, she looks beautiful with her new 
hairstyle. Yeah. That one with ha. 40% of the vote. I'm- with 27% of the vote, MagoCast not nominated for a 2010 podcast award. Thank you. With 26%, Vindicate. Dan Radcliffe thinks Justin Bieber is a girl. And only 5% thought the Mayor of London story was shocking. I, I, I found the Bieber story to be most shocking. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I thought that right. was the most controversial. It is controversial. Was he being serious? Saying that. Yeah. Emma Watson cutting her hair, something that grows back. <laughs> Which everyone does as well. Doesn't In everyone like eventually years. cut their hair? But her hair was so radically short. I mean, she looks like a yeah. uh, pixie. It does look weird. Uh, I think it looks weird. I know so, some people like it, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I do think it looks you, a bit you funny. You don't have to date her, Jamie. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could attend Brown University, God. though. Thank God you're you not could her, tell her in person. <laughs> What was that 10 points to Gryffindor thing? I read that it wasn't true somewhere. Oh, <laughs> that was I, such I don't a know. Thing. I don't know. We don't know if that's true. Rumor has it that... No, no, no. She had an interview, and, and she said it wasn't true. But she could just be saying that because it's so damn funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's going to do it now, now that the story yeah, got out. Built now. <laughs> All right, our next category, Best Returning Actor in Deathly Hallows <laughs> Part 1. Returning? Uh, Return- Wait, when you say returning, does this mean like an actor who was not who's been, on prior to no, the film? No, well, then that doesn't, in, that doesn't make sense. Returning meaning coming back for another film uh, who's been in it before, or who's been in them all before. You know, best, best actor. Um, so the nominees are Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, Ray Fimes, Ray Fines, and Tom Felton. Oh, you should have had Dobby in Start this. Start the poll now. He's well, not an actor, is he? He's a tennis ball on a stick. He had the best acting <laughs> in the entire film. We, these are people who have been in every film. With the exception of Rafe Fiennes. He's oh, been okay. almost all of them. I didn't read the fine print. Surprisingly, Rupert Grint seems to be taking an early lead with 56% of the votes. Everyone else is sort of lagging. Man. I mean, well, I'm surprised. I, I, I picked Rafe Fiennes. I thought... His job as Voldemort in this film was really good. Well, the results are now in. The winner of the best of the Muggle Casty for the best returning actor is. <laughs> Rupert Grint! That drum roll is like a second too long. <laughs> I, think this is, I think this is a good, accurate voting. For, for, I, 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 think, I really don't think so. Everybody thought, snubs Dan. What the hell? Is it. Okay, is it that. Harry is your character reading the book. He's your 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 in person. You're in his head, and is that why nobody likes Dan? No, it's not. Acting. You can't no, say no, 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 no. It's not that no one likes Dan. Sense. It's just that Dan wasn't the best actor in the film. Well, I mean, not the least votes is what I'm well, saying well, on on this poll. Well, and maybe and everyone's I'm, just... I'm tired of that. Well, I think. Uh, well, I think the main reason why Ron won was because he was you know the standout actor. I, I think. I think he stood out more than he's done in the other films, and that he had the biggest improvement. Also but that Tom Felton and, and Ray Fiennes and Rupert Grint well, stood Ray out more. Tom Fiennes and Rupert... No, yeah, Tom Felton and Ray Fiennes all had maybe a collective five minutes in the film. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, uh, you know what? I, I agree with the, the voting. I thought Rupert Grant was great in this film. And really a lot better, sort of unexpected, uh, in terms of his performance. It, it exceeded my, my expectations. Sorry. Next category, Best Returning Deathly Hallows Actress. <clears throat> the nominees are Emma Watson, Helena Bonham Carter, Imelda Staunton, and Bonnie Wright. Start the polling now. And the votes are coming in by the seconds. Mm, bum, bum, bum. This music this, makes you see. Mm. This, this song will it's like be, being hypnotized. <laughs> this song will be running through everyone's head all day, I'm sure. Da-da. After hearing yeah. it eight times. Mm. Oh, we gotta hear this nine times. I'm sorry. Emma Watson seems to be taking the lead, 55% of the vote, but closely followed by Helena Bonham Carter with 36%. <laughs> Bonnie Wright has Guys. a disappointing 2%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not amazing, is it? No. I the bet that's her. Of the Muggle Casting is. Emma Watson! Yay! What Tweeter. You, what do you think um, was her? <laughs> most notable, what do you think was her most notable scene? Emma Watson. I love oh, the first scene. The first scene. The one when she's yeah. erasing all her photos. It was such good filmmaking. It was a great mm. choice oh, to start. It's the best opening ever. I so have, cool. 
I have to also say when Hermione's asking Harry for her her wand back, she's like, "Harry, where's my wand?" After Ron returns, "Where's my wand? Where's my wand?" <laughs> I thought that was really. I funny. like I, I liked when she was um when she was when she had the Rita Skeeter book in her hand talking about her parents in the forest. If everybody could please notify Emma Watson via Twitter, her Twitter handle is M Watson, mm-hmm. so E M Watson, that she won a Muggle Castle Award for Best Returning Actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she also won the, the hair one. They're going to be, we think your hair, hair is the weirdest story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she also won for Best Shocking News Story, and her stickers are in the mail. Or will, will be in the mail by the end of the day. What, are we sending him pickles? Yes, you also get a commemorative pickle. <laughs> commemorative pickle. <laughs> With a smiley face on it. Perhaps we give her an exclusive membership to Pickle Pack. Yeah. <laughs> so we can reopen it. Today. We can reopen it for her. Today's winners will receive prizes from Pickle Pack. <laughs> Okay, great, great ideas. We have some great ideas. No, but seriously, let her know on Twitter. Maybe she'll respond. Maybe she'll be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> um... Okay. It'll be like the Oscar that never was. <laughs> I mean, I figure if if they get enough tweets, I'm going to do it once the show's over. I'm going to let them know too by Twitter. If they get enough tweets, they'll think it's something really big, so they'll have to respond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we get it trending, uh, if we yeah, if we get it trending, <laughs> we got to we got to be the Miley Cyrus trend. Muggle Casty hashtag. All right, our next category is best new Potter actor, and the nominees are oh jeez, Rise. Iphens. <laughs> Riz. Oh, it's Riz. Riz. <laughs> Both words were wrong there. <laughs> uh, Bill Nye. Got that one right? Good. Yeah. Peter Mulan and Andy Linden. Now, you might be saying, who who, who do these people play? Uh, Rice plays Xenophilius Lovegood. Bill Nye uh. plays Rufus Scrimgeour. Peter Mulan plays Yaxley. And Andy Linden plays... Mundungus Fletcher. I am starting the poll now, and the results are coming in. <clears throat> hmm. Can we still talk now? I can't remember. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't wait. All right. Now I was going to say, Andy Linden was not the Mundungus Fletcher that I thought Mundungus Fletcher was going to be like. Yeah. Did He's you really like think a- that? Oh yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be lanky and ginger, and this guy was Cockney short and squat. Cockney. You mean yeah. you mean to, you mean to tell me that Cockney short and squat? That should be the name of this episode. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that when you when Joe writes lanky and ginger, that you, you immediately your mind responds and says, "Oh, all right, I'm drawing a picture right now of a lanky ginger man." And yeah, that's, that's what the, I do when I read. I thought that's what everyone did. They <laughs> visualize what's on the page. What are you well, doing? Was it, was it I, bald I, in the movie. I base more on his, on his personality, you know. So I, I tend to form on well, you're their, an their actions. I know. Well, I do as How's well. But I still How's that? How am I an arrogant reader? Well, well, because you're saying uh, I, I don't pay attention to her uh, uh, no, it's characterization. Just, she, 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 I, hey, look, you have to agree that she uses colors to, as meaningful to represent certain things. So it, it's almost. Uh, less realistic to to go by what color a, a shirt was or a day was or the sky was. Yeah, but what because... about a person? Though? A person. If she says he's ginger and tall, then I'm going to imagine that. I'm not going to think. Well, if she says that, I won't think that. Right. But you I can't. Know, but maybe all the ginger actors were cast as Weasleys in Britain. Guys, this yeah, is, maybe. This yeah. is fascinating, but we must we must announce. I have a the question winner. for Jamie though. After you announce okay. the winner. The, oh, <laughs> the winner of the Muggle Cassie for best new actor. Goes to Rise Ifans and Reese Evans as well. Reese <laughs> Thank you. Listen, I'm not good at pronouncing English names. I'm sorry. I like how you waited to the very end to correct uh, Jamie. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't set it like right at the beginning. <laughs> Is he back in part two? Because I hope to never say his name again. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy who talk- won. <laughs> No, but he won with 40% of the votes. Bill Nye came in with 27% of the vote. Peter Milan came in with 17%. And Andy Linden came in with 15%. So uh, tight, tight, uh, or equally spread across the pie compared to other categories. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, though, um, we obviously left off some people, um, mm-hmm. the, the guys who played uh, Runghorn and Cattermole. We, we only have a certain number of uh, options we can put in, uh, right, on the poll, Andrew. That's, so That's correct. Uh, what did you think of that scene, uh, Jamie? Did you like what, it? The, uh, the ministry the scene. Road one? Yeah. 
Oh, it, oh, the ministry one. Oh, well, yeah, I did like. I th- thought the bit where he is turning back into Harry and is and he he brings his scars up was a great touch. It's really nice. But what I didn't like is how they transformed back when they were already inside the sorry when they were still inside the ministry i didn't think that was that good because you know i'm sure that many wizards could you know um prevent them from leaving the whole point was that they almost got there before they transformed and then they got out just as just as they were transforming back it seemed a bit but yeah yeah the uh yeah it was funny as well with the catamole thing but but i wanted to say actually about that scene you know uh in Lord of the Rings, when, you know, you wear the ring and it affects you, and in Harry Potter, you wear the Horcrux and it affects you. Well, right. since Umbridge was wearing the Horcrux, was she acting completely of her own accord, or was the right. Muggleborn committee actually because she was wearing it? Well, it, it affects people more than the other, and I think Umbridge was just already at that point, you know, she's, she's a, you know what, anyways, so. Yeah, yeah. You mean to say that it didn't affect her at all? No, because she's just evil. She's an oh, evil geez. person. Well, look, look, I think I think it brings out the worst in you. I think uh, I think she was absolutely affected by the locket Horcrux. Mm. Maybe well, not. I think, I think if anything, more. the locket would only make her a nicer person. Was there anything you noticed, <laughs> Eric? Was there anything you noticed that made you think she was? It was making her act stranger. It just the, strange? the particular malice with which she says, "You are not a witch." And and who did you steal it from? Like re, like I can understand a prejudice, but that seemed uh, to be enhanced by by the by the locket to me. I agree. I agree. I, uh, well, uh, I don't know. It's a tough one, but I think it probably did have an effect on her. I don't think there's evil and not evil. Like there's always you know yeah shades of grey, isn't there? And great scene though, Mike. A great scene. I did like it a lot. Yeah. Now we're moving on to best new Potter actress. The nominees are. Madelac Gibbs, who plays Aunt Muriel, Sophie Thompson, who plays Mafalda Hopkirk, Hazel Douglas, who plays Bathilda Bagshot, or Kate and Kate Fleetwood, who plays Mary Cattermall. The results. I don't want to influence the uh, the go, poll, but the first one, Aunt, Aunt Muriel, was fantastic, especially that yeah. line when she said, "My boy." Didn't you know him at all, or whatever she he said about Harry and Dumbledore, which was a great line. It was absolutely brilliant. It was a great way to like dramatize how ha- Harry was feeling towards Dumbledore at that point. Really, hey, what really accent good was that, Jamie? Do you know? Do you recognize? What her accent? Oh, she was yeah, just English, accent. I think. Oh, yeah, I uh. think she was. <laughs> her costume too was pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, well, it was actually a very tight. Uh, uh, competition for this category the winner is is uh geez i can't i have to look closely madelac gibbs uh so jamie you did influence the vote she plays or perhaps i didn't aunt muriel (laughs) or perhaps she was just good perhaps she's just good yeah 27 the worst edgy 27 (laughs) percent of the vote uh coming in close second hazel douglas with 26 percent and sophie thompson had 25 percent kate fleetwood with 20 percent so mixed results that was a i don't understand go go ahead probably did Madelock yeah. Gibbs. I'm sure she has Twitter. Would it be awesome if they had the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Send her a pickle. <laughs> uh, oh, he said uh, it. Um, I don't get it. Kate Fleetwood had the most acting to do in this in this film. Yeah, but Madelock you know, Gibbs but the, was the but best. Hazel, Hazel Douglas, Bethilda Bagshot, really? Bethilda Bagshot <laughs> like, wasn't even. She was dead. But best see, new actress, saying, really? You know, Madelock Gibbs also now you get more from her in the book I feel but um, Aunt Muriel you know with that short amount of time that she had I feel like she 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 played it off well with the amount of time she job, was limited yeah. she didn't have, mm-hmm. anyway. really great job yeah all right why wasn't he wearing the invisibility cloak though no sorry I don't mean that I mean why wasn't he um, transformed into the Weasley Barney and why, was it Barney yeah, yeah. Barney, and why didn't he? They wear the invisibility cloak when they went places. I know it's a visual so medium. You can see them. <laughs> well, yeah, but ah, oh, that that was annoying. But it, understand. It, oh. Well, especially because it does play a big role in terms of the the Deathly Hallows. So you would think I was there born been... here, Hermione. I'm not coming back as someone else. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was a big. Or maybe you could have seen them like take off the invisibility cloak 
as they approach well, their destination. You know? I argued this before. Bethilda still knows it's Harry. Maybe it's the snake Horcrux connection. But even though he's Barney, disguised as Barney, she knows it's him, and they still make that connection. So it, it, there's really no point to him being disguised to begin with. He, 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 there's no example where him being disguised actually helps him out in the Godric's Holocene. Mm. Our next category is Best Deathly Hallows Part 1 Scene. Jeez. Now, of course, there's a ton of great scenes in this movie, so it was very, tough, hard, very, tough. very hard to pick four, but these were at the discretion of Micah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, put it all on my shoulders. Micah, it's all right. Hey, I saw it too. And Eric. Micah has Mike and Eric. Hey, people the- reviewed this document, all right? So don't, don't go giving me <laughs> hell if, if your favorite it was shared scene doesn't with five make the people. Cut. Yeah. The nominees are Seven Potters, The Ministry, The Locket Horcrux, and Malfoy Manor slash Dobby's Death. We had to put those two together. And the oh, voting, that's not fair. The voting has now begun. My vote, personally, I don't want to influence the vote, but my vote, personally, <laughs> is Malfoy Manor, Dobby's Death. Because Malfoy Manor, was those, those scenes in general, there were a few throughout the movie. And any time we were in Malfoy Manor, I loved it. Yeah, I gotta agree. Well, I agreed strictly on Dobby's death. The early winner seems to be Malfoy Manor and Dobby's death, with 43% of the vote. Go banana! Easily winning. Ah, oh, the one I voted <laughs> wow. for is uh, I voted for the slow death. The winner Which one? is Seven, Seven Potters. Malfoy Manor and Dobby's death with 43% of the votes. Yay. Uh, coming in a close second is the Ministry with 23%, the Locket Horcrux with 21%, and Seven Potters with 11%. Oh, by the way, by the way, that scene, Seven Potters, one more bad continuity error was that their voices didn't transfer over, but in Chamber of Secrets, they did transfer over. Yes. Annoying, no, in Chamber of Secrets, they, no, they... What do you mean? The, no, the, they, they... When they, they used they Polyjuice. Kept, potion. Yeah, they kept film continuity. In 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 Chamber of Secrets, their voices don't change. Yeah, their voices. Oh, I don't thought they did. Right. No. No. Oh, right. Okay. They impersonate. So they make. The, they go yeah. like this. Yeah. They talk. So they actually. Yeah. Yeah. They talk. Okay. Sorry. Ignore. Ignore. Big fail. Ignore it. But you're right. It oh. is a book difference. You know, it's a, it's a book difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by yeah. the way, what I was going to say is in the locket uh, scene when they're when they're trying to curse it and it isn't dying i was ex- <laughs> i was expecting elrond to come in and say like the ring cannot be, be destroyed, destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> <He's a son laughs> that'd be so cool if they had to go to mount doom and chuck it in there <laughs> okay we've arrived at our final category before determining the top seven stories of the year this is the jk rowling award now, um, um, in years past, J.K. Rowling has won the J.K. Rowling Award, but we've added some competitors <laughs> to, to make the competition tight. Now, in order to be nominated for J.K. Rowling Award, you have to be female, you have to be an author or, or influential in the book uh, community, and you also have to be sort of somebody in the entertainment industry as well. So we've picked four women who um, meet all of those criteria. And the nominees are J.K. Rowling, J.K. Ro- no, I'm kidding. Suzanne Collins, who is the author of The Hunger Games, Oprah Winfrey, we all know Oprah, <laughs> and last but not least, or maybe least, <laughs> depending on how this poll goes, Stephanie Meyer, who is oh, the this author, is be so interesting. Who is the one. author of Twilight? So now, if I if I may sway the poll here, begun. I'm yeah. going to say that there is there is only one J.K. Rowling. <laughs> And that, that's wow. <laughs> wow, that's not gonna. Wow, so, why was even J.K. Rowling even oh. on this? Well, because she you know, <laughs> to like, win the J.K. Rowling Award, you have to be a J.K. Woman. Rowling. <laughs> yes, basically, <laughs> J.K. Rowling to win. So the Justin award. Bieber could potentially beat J.K. Rowling, <laughs> according well, to Dan. Have to be female. Yeah. <laughs> well, J.K. <laughs> Rowling. In, in years past, we haven't put J.K. Rowling up against any of anybody else but this year we decided to try to do that anyway so it's fair the winner is now and it's very clear the winner of the jk rowling award goes to jk rowling 
with tweet, now, her, tweet her, tweet her, tweet her. Now, tweet guys, her. you got to tweet her. You got to tweet her and tell her that she won the J.K. Rowling Award. Hundreds of millions of times. <laughs> with an astounding 81% of the votes. Uh, Suzanne Collins, author of The Hunger Games, had 10% of the votes. With 5% of the votes, Stephanie Meyer. And with 2%, Oprah Winfrey. I thought for sure Oprah would beat Stephanie, but... I thought so, too. Well, we didn't have Melissa and Ellie on this poll, and if we had, it, <laughs> yes. she would have seriously been a contender. So, uh, so there oh, you yeah. go. Jake, you're, Steve, I, go on. Hmm. No, I was just going to say, Stephen King came out and said that Stephanie Meyer is not a good writer. Yes. And, you know, Stephen what? King's God. So. No, he, actually, Stephen King, is this, he'll put his name on anything these days. Do you notice that? Do you ever go to open up a book that looks interesting, and then Stephen King gives his, his like word of praise, and then you're like, oh, I don't know if I should actually read this because he's given words of praise to like every other book no, I've picked up? No, I love it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so true. It's he's true. such a good writer, though. He's so Read The Shining. It's so good. It's that such a good like book. like 50 years old, though. Well, that, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Just, timeless okay. classic. Timeless classic, oh. yeah. Oh, what about okay, Timeless classic. Okay, but, well, no. I'm saying about the media has got Homer. Him. I'm saying Stephen King's word of endorsement isn't what it used to be when he first endorsed the exactly. Harry Potter books. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. He's kind of he's still a good writer. I'll still read his books, but I won't read the books that he says are good because these oh, days no. I'm just like I feel like he's, the publishers own his ass. You know? I don't so. know. He's powerful. I don't think they do. He can go to any publisher in the world and say like. I want to publish a book, and they'd be crawling all over him just to read his words. I just, um, I just tried to get Muggle Casties trending by putting a tweet out, but instead of putting tr- trending, I put "Let's get it trendy, people." <laughs> <laughs> it is trendy. Let's isn't get it? trendy. Okay, so um, before we move on to our top seven stories of the year, we are going to play another best Muggle Cast moment. Now, this is from episode two hundred eleven. Dumbledore is Order of Merlin First Class. Was that the f- show title, or was is this the clip? No, no, it was Order of Micah. <laughs> oh, Order of Micah for... Oh, I see. Okay. That, no, that was the name of the show. Oh, right. Okay, I, I, I remember this now. So let's go back in time, all the way back to episode 211, and listen. That's so hilarious. First up, Dumbledore versus Merlin. Andrew, you take Dumbledore. Jamie, you take Merlin. Andrew, you go first. Dumbledore is clearly, clearly, uh, clearly the greatest wizard of all time. There's no question about this. If if you ask anyone on the street who's going to win, Dumbledore or Merlin, more people will say Dumbledore just because they know him better. I mean, this is someone. <laughs> this is someone who's been fighting Voldemort all his life. What did Merlin do? Who did he fight? He didn't fight anyone. He didn't have to take down anyone. Did Merlin sacrifice himself for the for the greater good? I don't think so. All right. I think actually Andrew's completely wrong. And if you ask most people in the street, name a famous wizard, I think more would say Merlin after Gandalf than would say Dumbledore. I also think that if you consider that Dumbledore has the Deathly Hallows as the biggest legend surrounding him, and you think, well, that's quite a big legend, but it's only involved in the uh, Harry Potter thing, uh, whereas Merlin was involved in the search for the Holy Grail, and everyone's heard of the Holy Grail, and if you didn't trust someone to that kind of task, they've got to be pretty damn powerful. Uh, and I think Merlin's probably got access to different types of wizardry, whereas Dumbledore is more of a Harry Potter, you know, uh, uh, book thing only, whereas I think Merlin uh, comes in different guises, and he's probably had more experience than Dumbledore. I I think he's probably older than Dumbledore as well, and you know, age is wiseness and, and blah blah blah. So uh, I think Merlin would uh, cane Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would just like to add add this um, fact to it. I mean, isn't Dumbledore like Order of Merlin first class? I mean, oh, there's no Order of Dumbledore. Oh, darn it! <laughs> oh, that's that's a great, great. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. If I, do, I, I wish I just said that. I'd just been like, Andrew, what's the order of m- the Dumbledore's got? And he said, Merlin. And I said, I press my case. <laughs> so, Micah, that was one of your brilliant moments this year. That was amazing. Oh, that this was. Wasn't, oh, I thought this, you guys were talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clip. Oh, obviously. But surely, since you sit with Andrew and you didn't see his mouse move. No, no, I had the in front of me. I, 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 I thought I was just totally lost in the conversation. I thought, what are we talking about? Weird. Sorry. Weird is right. Okay, Sorry. so we're going to move on now to the top seven stories of the year. We selected the lowest three. So we, we determined 
uh, story seven, six, and five. <laughs> and we will leave it up to the listeners to determine the top four. And the way we're going to do that is have you vote for your what you believe is the top story. And from there, we'll be able to ter- determine the top four. If you Of if, the year. Of the, of year, the year, right. So number seven, Muggle... <laughs> Boy, we're really tuning our own horn here. Mugglecast's landmark 200th episode and podcast inside the Wizarding World. Um, this was obviously very special for us because this was the first time a podcast had been done inside the theme park. Um, frankly, I don't know if a podcast has ever been done inside any theme park before, unless it was like the park's own podcast. But that was really special, and we thank everyone who turned out for that. And everyone who's been with and us. And now our episode is separate. What's that? You know, the two hundred the two hundredth episode is when we interviewed David Heyman. Right. Um, yeah. The, the podcast inside the Wizarding World was actually like two hundred three, was it, or something? At two hundred one, so. I think. Wasn't it right oh, afterward? Really? I think it was mm-hmm. uh, maybe a couple episodes after. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was a good summer because we hit two hundred episodes, which is really you know when we look back and think that we've done over two hundred of these, it's pretty in- insane, isn't it, Micah? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think 200 episodes, none of us thought when you, Kevin, and Ben started the show that uh, it was going to last uh, as long as it has. And, you know, going into, what would it be, six years next year? It's yep. it's crazy. Six years, oh. Ten, ten years is going to be the big one. Number six story. <laughs> what are we going to do for that? <laughs> oh, I had an idea, actually. Do you, do you know Boys Like Girls, that band? Yeah. To talk about all the time. Well, apparently they like Harry Potter, so I think we should do a joint show with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start working on that. Let's start out replying them too. Well, yeah, yeah, we need to. Yeah. <laughs> um, number six, Warner Tweet Brothers. That, yeah. Number six story of the year: Warner Brothers purchasing Leavesden Studios. Uh, and we selected this story because Leavesden, that is where all of the Harry Potter films have been shot primarily. And it's really turned into a Harry Potter world there. I mean, all the sets are there, the Great Hall, Dumbledore's office. Um, you know, even the ones they built and then deconstructed and rebuilt a million times, they've all been there. Um, and I think th- the cast and crew would agree that's been their second home for the past 10 years. And the fact that Warner Brothers is purchasing it is great because they are making, they are going to add a Harry Potter museum in there. So some of the sets are going to live there forever. So that's pretty special, and people, fans will be able to go and visit. Yeah, those are going to be the actual sets, not the recreations or anything right, like that. I mean, it's going to be nothing like what you saw on film, yeah. It's, and it's going to be better than the exhibition because the exhibition, you know, is sort of reconstruction. I mean, uh, reconstructed. Um, the, 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 in the exhibit, well, the exhibition there are... Well, props and costumes. Right, right. I but mean, I'm saying the real sets are going to be... And, yeah, and, maybe a few set pieces in the exhibition to help guide you you along in the story, but but the sets. I mean, what you mean to say is that it will be more authentic than the Wizarding World. Yes, you're yes, you're right. And and leaves in. I mean, you're going where the films were shot. How cool is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, very very cool. Yeah. Number five story. The this is a sort of roundup category. The Harry Potter movie merchandise. There's a few things that came out this year, which I think fans have been really enjoying. The Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire Ultimate Editions, the Harry Potter pop-up book, and what I think is the best uh, Harry Potter merchandise to come out this year, Harry Potter Film Wizardry. It's the book we've talked about on episodes of MuggleCast before. It's, it's it's, It's basically an encyclopedia about the films. There's tons of new interviews in it, tons of behind the scene pictures, um, concept art. If, if any of you have purchased it, Excuse me. You know what we're talking about. I mean, this it's very comprehensive and a very good read. Yeah, especially because it, it does take a look at the the final two films uh, more than than I anticipated. You know, looking at some of the the sets and some of the actors sitting down and interviewing them, and you do get a brief look at uh, at part two. So, it, if you want a, a quick glimpse into what some of the things they worked on for part two is like, you know, definitely go and uh, check out that book. Mm-hmm. And now the top four stories of the year, we will that they will be determined by you guys. Oh our wait, wait, Andrew, you didn't say the the best Harry Potter merchandise of the year was the Harry Potter Snuggie. Oh, the Harry Potter Snuggie. Have you guys seen that? See, I can't find Matt, that anywhere. I'll, I'll, it's I'll it's available it. on Hot Topic. I have one. I've been wearing it whenever I'm cold, and when you wear it, you look like a Gryffindor student. 
and Matt's going to model it off on, on camera right so now. So is it just Gryffindor? Because I've seen a Harry Potter Snuggie that was all four the crests. Uh, this one from Hot Topic is the crest. Or, or sorry, it's you look like a Gryffindor. Stay in front of the camera right there. Now duck down so we can <laughs> Hang see on, the, See, There's a Matt, lag, so... Doesn't Matt look like a Gryffindor student? Can't see it yet. He's nice and warm, and he's cozy. Lag! <laughs> So, so, okay, that counts as some of the Harry Potter merchandise is here. Thanks, man. <laughs> Matt's going to wear it for the rest of the show now. It's nice and warm. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so <laughs> now moving on to the top four stories of the year. Interestingly, our viewer count went up when Matt started modeling. I don't know if that says something. <laughs> or, um, the top four stories of the year, they're going to be determined by, the, determined by the people listening live right now. Uh, competitor number one, the final day of Harry Potter filming. This was, of course, huge because they've been filming for 10 years. And I think we reported the final day like five times because I, <laughs> I don't think it's still been determined when exact the last day was. Because, like, Work Davis would tweet, oh, it's the final day. But now they're going back for reshoots. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so, glad they're doing reshoots. Yeah. The, the point is, generally, filming ended this year. Um Competitor number two, of course, movie seven being released. Competitor number three, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter opening. I mean, that, that was huge. And, was okay. and finally, two of the competitors in the J.K. Rowling Award, uh, J.K. Rowling's interview on Oprah, which was big because that was the only interview that J.K. Rowling gave this year, and we really got a good look into her personal life. So we're going to start the poll now. Now, this is big. Do not take your vote lightly. You were determining what the biggest story of the year was. And how we're going to decide the winners oh, is God. the most voted story will be the top story. And we're going to descend from there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Two of them were legitimately tied, man. For, oh, it's neck and neck. It really just depends on what, is, what you consider is huge, like the books. Or theme parks. Andrew, we, we really have to call this a tie. Oh, we do. Tough. Well, it's very close. It's very close. The winner of the... Or should we... Well, let's go up from number four to number one. So the yeah. number four story with 9% of the vote was J.K. Rowling's interview on Oprah. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good interview. A lot of people speculated, oh, she's going on Oprah. Why, Why would she do this? Is she going to announce anything? Well, no, she didn't announce anything. <laughs> <laughs> and we fact, all know, Andrew, that, that if, if J.K. Rowling announces something, it's going to be on her Twitter. Yeah. Ah, yes. That well, is also, probably not a lot of people voted because most of the time during the interview, Oprah talked about herself. No, that's not true. They did. It, the interview was criticized because at one point they were like talking about how rich they both were. <laughs> well, they are. I mean, if I was rich like that, I'd talk about it for at least five seconds. <laughs> oh, my God, Joe, are you as rich as me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of me. That's kind of me. Anyway, the number three story, the final day of Harry Potter filming. It was kind of bittersweet when... Did anyone cry when they heard that they were done? No. Well, not having been personally involved or invested with the filming of the film franchise, I gotta say. Well, I, I'm confused that uh, this isn't the top story, you know, because the, the part one film being released is actually... I think less significant than the fact that all the movies together are done, you know, are done filming. And, you know, sure, they have reshoots in December, but that, that really means that, the, you know, this 10-year film project is finished. That, to me, is more significant mm -hmm. than uh, the, the, the second-to-last film being out as the a top story. Yeah. What was a huge story, I thought, too, was the first release of the Deathly Hallows trailer. The first one, you know, the, uh, the one that had both movies? It was a big story, but it's not as big as the film being released. I don't know. I cried yeah, when I saw that. Being finished. <laughs> the number two story. Very, <laughs> by the way, the, the top two stories, very, very tight vote. It was actually going back and forth while the voting was going on. But number two is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter opening with 34.48% of the votes. Nice. You know, I think, I agree. It's a very close competition between the film being released and the theme park yeah. the significance of the theme park being that it is going to be there forever i mean this is this is a <laughs> wonderful way to for harry potter to uh, maintain its influence to to for for people to come back and you know feel the magic of being in that park 
Um, in the heat and waiting in line. And it's only going to get bigger. <laughs> And yeah, rumor. There's already some rumors that it's going to get bigger, and I, I that I think that has potential to be a big story in 2011. Yeah. I, I mean, I voted for the theme park. I, I thought that um, it, probably the. I mean, when you look at it, it goes back to what Eric was saying before. With um, you know, this movie being released was only one part of a larger, you know, series. So it was it, it, to me even the the final day of filming should have been higher than the, than the movie seven release. And the number one story of the year goes to Deathly Hallows Part One being released. Well, of Ooh. course, of course, it had to be, didn't yeah. it? It had to be. Yeah, but it is interesting. Didn't how- have to be. <laughs> Okay, sorry. I know. Like, happen. does that mean I that hate... next year the top story, no matter yeah, what, is going to be two. part two really? No, you're, I mean, it, you're absolutely yeah, right. Pretty I, much. Said that. I hate it when people say that. It had to be because there was no reason it had to be that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt it was the right thing to say at such an emotional juncture. <laughs> but that's that's what fans get most excited about. I mean, and but and and the theme park was extremely exciting too, and that's why it was such a close race between those two. Yeah. So, um, it, plus, I think if if. Let's say all of our listeners had been to the theme park this year. I think that one would have gotten, would have won, would have won. Well, out of out of four hundred and seventy votes, I mean, a difference of nine votes, which really determined the the first and second place winners. Nine votes out of four hundred, whatever I just said. You know, that's 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 really mm. neck and neck. Right. Aren't they both thirty four percent, and one's thirty four four eight, and the other ones? Well, the Wizarding World will probably win in the two thousand and twelve end of the year show. Because next year is going to be part two. There's really nothing else in 2012, so we can get it has the theme to be. Park. It has yeah. to be. It has part to two. be. It has to be. The theme park will win one year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by, by 2015, we're going to be like, and the top story is Universal adds a new drink to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to turn, what, 35 then? I don't know. It's pretty, pretty intense. Somebody no. on the show is 30. Are they? No. How um, old's Mikey B? Mikey B's not <laughs> thirty. <laughs> 30. Aww. Mikey oh, B's like on. twenty-four. I was thinking. Of, I was thinking on my feet, man. He just Mikey gives B's off 24. this maturity. No, he's he like, gives off like this maturity. Twenty-four. I'm twenty-four. Okay, maybe, maybe he's twenty-six. Mikey B's like Mikey B. <laughs> <laughs> look this up. Hi, <laughs> Mikey B. I'll look this up. Mikey B. All right. Anyway, oh my. <laughs> Eric's got to look it up. Um, mm. So there we go. There are the 30 annual Muggle Cassies. It was a lot of fun. And we'll be back next year for another award ceremony. Don't forget to tweet the winners. If you want to see the results uh, written down, we will be making a post uh, sometime within the next week with all the winners laid out so you can see how close each competition was or how easy it was in the case of the J.K. Rowling Award. Now we're going to look at another best MuggleCast moment of the year. This comes from episode 197. It was a clip from our interview with Warwick Davis. And was this the one in April, Micah? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm pulling up the correct audio file. And um, I guess there's not much to intro, so we will just go back in time as I get it ready. And here we go. Let's go back in time. Well, just going back to uh, to Potter for for one second. Um, one of the the questions that seems to come up the most often is if you could take one prop from the set of all these films, what would it be? Like, what would you love to have on the mantelpiece? You mean that Emerson uh, you know always asks lovely, that question when he does the uh, totally looking at the questions? A prop that I have from Willow. I have a Willow wand <gasps> no. in a frame on the wall here, and I would love a Harry Potter wand. In a frame just next to that, right. I think it would be marvelous. That's pretty so that, cool. That though. would be the one yeah. thing. I mean, one I think from every all film. the professors would tell you exactly Shh. the same thing. Oh. You know, the, sorry, sorry, the sorry. sorry. The faculty at Hogwarts would love to have their wand at the end of all of this, but uh, but who knows? Um, yeah, that that would be the one. That would be the one. So you could pick it up from time to time and reenact that classic scene from Sorry for from spoiling that. Stone, the swish and flick. <laughs> oh, I do enjoy the swish and flick, absolutely. <laughs> and I do a lot of um, a lot of talks in schools <laughs> about about acting and you know how youngsters might get into acting. And and at one point, somebody asked me about that, and I'll always end up doing a little charms class with everybody. And it's 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 quite magical, you know, to to see all of the kids kind of. Uh, <laughs> 
practicing this. Swish and flick. Guardian <laughs> <Wingardium> Leviosa. <laughs> That's it. it. It brings us all back. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we were we were totally trying to set him up to do that impression because we heard that he'd done it. That he usually does it. So. Uh, Man. It's not yeah. an impression, though. He he is that guy. He is. I love it. Although it's funny when we asked David Heyman this that same question about what would you take, he's like, "Well, it was funny. I actually have taken a few pieces of the set." It Apparently, like they get in serious trouble for doing it towards the end of filming. Like there was some extra security to make sure nobody was stealing anything. Well, I doubt <laughs> well, David Heyman's going to get in trouble for stealing. You know, the movie he's producing. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, no, but I guess random cast members or something. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so Alfie Enoch. <laughs> Before Does it we... go by screen time? Do you think? Do you think that they'll set up all the props at the end on a long table? And if you have more than five minutes of screen time, you get sort of the second tier of items that you can choose from to take home. Maybe there's like a booth that you can just take things from. Yeah, I think they should just give everyone a Harry Potter snuggie. By the way, Matt, that was Matt. That was a clip we just played. That was not actually. Work David Davis did not oh, actually was, just was, join us. I was going to thank him for being on the show. For just well, now. apparently Jamie thought he was joining us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I win, win. What, Warwick? Yeah, yeah, right now, and you're just like... Uh, no, 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 no. I got so confused. When you said, oh, that's great, I thought you were talking now. So yeah, I was see, see it's, not, it's, it's not easy. I know, Matt. I know, I know. I, I ripped you earlier for making the mistake, thinking, how could you do that? And mm-hmm. then I've just <laughs> done it myself now. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, and now before we get on to the final MuggleCast moment, we are going to look. Ba- we are going to look forward to 2011. Look into the future, Michael. What do we have to look forward to in the year 2011 as Harry Potter fans? Deathly Hallows Part Two. That's it. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a couple of other things here. You know, the Wizarding World. Uh, will there be any expansion plans? I'm sure they're not going to build anything next year but certainly there could be plans put together and what about gk rowling i mean she's been quiet for a while whether we're talking about the encyclopedia we're talking about you know writing something completely different we still haven't heard from her in a long time and uh, i think you know it's about time if she's planning on doing anything else that uh you know she might want to let people know no i think i think the encyclopedia might be coming out next year yeah I think she'll probably announce it. I mean, she's 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 been doing something. You never know. Well, writing's been her priority for a year and a half now. So yeah, so <laughs> she must have written something. <laughs> Something's gonna have to come out soon. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to the final MuggleCast moment that we're reliving today. This came from episode two hundred. When producer of all the Harry Potter films, David Heyman, was on, it was an absolute pleasure to have him on the show because he has been such an important person in the Harry Potter franchise. He's a genuine fan of the series. Um, he's, he's appreciative of the fan sites. He, you know, he's just an all-around great guy. So here now is a clip from episode 200, Admit Defeat. I think this clip actually has him saying namesake. Admit Defeat. So let's go back in time. I guess two short bits here. Um, we do have a, a, a segment on our podcast called The Dueling Club, um, which is where we, we, we basically we choose a character in our heads, and uh, then we state the characters, and we face them off against each other, arguing in favor of the character we chose who would win in a duel. Um, were you, would you think that's something you'd be interested in playing? Uh, my goodness, I'm going to be... Who, who will I be playing? Uh, you'll be playing against Micah, and you can choose whatever character from the from the Harry Potter books that, that you could possibly think of. Okay. <laughs> okay, do you have uh, your character? Yes. Okay, Micah, do you have your character? Yes. Okay, um... Which one Mike, you would you like go to go first, just to give me a hand <laughs> on what I meant to do? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go with, uh, with Bellatrix. Ah, excellent. I'll go with Snape. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, this is this is good. All right, gentlemen. Which, um, since Micah, you presented first, what is your argument in favor of Bellatrix beating Snape? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think. Uh, One sec. Do, do you want do you want to accept defeat now? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't even know that that that's even a fair fight. I mean, I know she's. Uh, 
she's a very powerful Death Eater and kind of Voldemort's uh, right hand woman. But I don't know that she would she would stand up very well in in, the, in a duel against Snape. I think he's too powerful. I think uh, I think Snape is I think Snape is really under I think the power of Snape. I mean, just because I I think we both agree that Snape would Snape Snape yes. would win. Yes, uh, <laughs> absolutely. But I think um, and I didn't think of that just because you chose Bellatrix. I was thinking about Snape because I think Snape is is very underrated. One, he has the ability to deceive brilliantly because yes. he deceived the Dark Lord for an extended period of time. Um, he also has been wanting to be, you know, the uh, professor of the dark arts forever. So you know that he is well versed in in in, 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 in all the dark arts and defense of as well, mm-hmm. or defense against. And um, um, and also, um, you know, he he's not too you know he's not too bad at potions either. <laughs> so he's a quite well rounded um, wizard. Yes. So. Uh, it's fun to listen to that clip because you could tell how passionate of a fan David Heyman really is. Yeah. If he was as passionate, he would have said Molly Weasley. <laughs> I don't know. She has one good line the entire series. Come she on. She kills Bellatrix. Several. Does she? It just sounds like she shouts at her. I don't even remember. It's been so long since I read the book. Well, Eric. That, don't that, say that on the show. I mean, you just yeah, admitted that you? to you 500. You can't remember. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't, it didn't make an impression on me. It didn't. So there was some, so much else happening there at that time. No one was saying anything, though. She said what everyone was thinking. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, this... sure half, I'm sure half the people in the room were thinking uh, the opposite. This concludes our year in review show. It's been a lot of fun, and we thank everybody for listening. Also, thanks to, I think it's uh, Terrence, somebody, somebody using the username Hogwarts Podcast. Is that Terrence, Eric? It must be, right? I don't know. He usually goes by the name Terencius or Hogwarts yeah. Radio. Oh, well, regardless, he's been mocking the chat, the, the live chat, so I just want to say thanks to him or whoever is, uh, is behind Hogwarts Podcast right now. Well, also, so, that is you Terrence. don't even know that who's Terrence. modding the chats? <laughs> well, I just give it to anybody. Name. Just give Maybe it to it's Hayley. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. I trust. I'm a very trustworthy person. Oh, he said thank you, guys. Yeah, so oh, yeah. he's well, good. Uh, well, speaking of that, though, we mentioned the podcast awards before, and obviously Terrence does uh, Hogwarts Radio, and they're nominated. So uh, we encourage people to go out there and vote for them. Because uh, we're as not. Well as, uh, yeah, because we're not, <laughs> for whatever reason. And uh, you know, we also have another podcast that we do called Smart Mouths that's up for uh, people's choice. Oh, we so, do? Do we do well, that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jamie. Well, the majority of people on the show do it, so we can say we. <laughs> oh. Don't worry, Jamie. It's ending. You don't have to feel left out anymore. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Jamie's uh, going to start a show called British Mouths. <laughs> one us. Yeah, I will. I will. No, no, no I'm not. I'm going to call it Smarter Mouths. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good one. Good one. All right. Well, it's been a lot of fun, and we'll actually be back before the year ends with... Um, episode 217 and we're going to have another dis- great Harry Potter discussion but for just now we want to say it's been another great year in Harry Potter and we appreciate everybody sticking with us as we trek through the final two films and beyond any final words gentlemen? The final two? There's just one God, left. I feel kind of patriotic <laughs> to, a, to a decade of Potter is concluding the decade of Potter is yes. concluding. Yes, it is. Well, we oh majority God, of the books. Depressing. The majority of the books, all of the movies except the final, final one, all of them were filmed. Uh, we got to grow up now, don't we? <laughs> we got the. <laughs> it's all Do going we? to change now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, J- Jamie, you're already a businessman, so. <laughs> oh, I'm not the businessman. I can't take credit for bed. <laughs> he's the, he's the businessman, man. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm Andrew Thanks Sims. for tuning in. I'm Eric Skull. I'm Matt Britton. I'm Micah Tannenbaum. And I'm Jamie Lawrence. And we'll see you next time for episode 217. Thanks for listening live thank to you. everyone. Thanks Bye, to guys. the chat mods. Uh, thanks to everyone. Is Odd this- Lil Sang. Odd Lang Sin. Wow. Old Lang Sign. It's okay. Lang wow. Sign. It's French. Recyphon. <laughs> Recyphon. Yeah. I'll bet he listens to that. <laughs>
I already tweet Riss Iphens. Apologize. Is this, Bruce? Bruce? Yes, Blatt. this is Bruce Springsteen, isn't it? <laughs> Micah gave it to me. It wasn't me. Uh, well, hang on. Des Platt. What is it, Jamie? Des Platt. It oh. is Des Platt. I know for a fact. Okay, Andrew, I can't wait till you're on the red carpet and you interview him, because I'm going to laugh my ass. <laughs> we have Desplat. interviewed him, and his name is Des Platt. Oh, no. no. He was just being polite. He was just being polite. He didn't want to call you out on it there and then. That was the thing. <laughs> what could he say to you? All right. Have a good Saturday, everyone listening. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.